Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, everybody from the IJOC Secretariat. We are here again together for being a part of the webinar Ophthalmology Resident Training Series 7. QRTS will be giving us a platform for the young generation to come up with academic activities as a whole with this type of programs. Bond between the states of IJOC will be tightened. Through IJOC, Eastern India is gaining its position and repute in the National Academic Forum. Our Chairman Scientific Committee, Dr. Sabhasachi Patnaik, framed the webinar in a meticulous way, supported by the Chief Coordinator, Dr. BNR Zubudi, sir, and the Coordinator, Dr. Ashok Nanda and Dr. Anurag Misra. The program is mentored by none other than First President of AIOS, Dr. Ajit Babu Maji. The speaker of the evening will be Dr. Tanuz Dada, Professor of Ophthalmology and Head of the Glaucoma Service at RP Center for Ophthalmic Sun, Kims, New Delhi. We had also a galaxy of panelists who are the masters in the field of glaucoma and discussions are choose from different academic institutions across the country. We plan to do this type of webinar regularly. In addition, our new chairman, ARC, Dr. YC Milti, is also planning to have few ARC activities during the year. Thank you, everybody. And over to our president, Dr. B. N. Gupta, sir. Uh, Dr. Gupta, you're muted. Dr. B. N. Gupta, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a uh, I'm really very glad to join this program today. And uh, I really thank Dr. BNR Subhuddi for uh, taking a new initiative and starting this program, which is very useful to our residents. Uh, Dr. Sabdasachi Majumdar Patnayak, Dr. Uh, Ashok Nanda, Dr. Anurag Mishra, and above all, my good friend, Dr. Ajit Babu Maji, our AIOS past president for mentoring this program. Today's uh, program is very, today's topic is very relevant because uh, uh, in spite of many advancements in glaucoma management and diagnostics, uh, still the glaucoma management is uh, a, a little perplexing many a times. And uh, uh, especially for uh, the two things which I will like to stress upon is disc evaluation and the gonioscopy, which is uh, uh, not very costly uh, and you can uh, get it done anywhere in the even in the remote places. So okay. this uh, gives a very good chance to diagnose glaucoma and pick up the disease as early as possible so that the proper management can be done timely. So I, I, I uh, uh, ask the panelists and Dr., the main chief coordinator, Dr. Uh, BNR Subhuti to start this program. Thank you. Thank you, President. So let me share the screen first. In the meantime, I will uh, 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 welcome Dr. Tanuz Dada, my old friend. Tanuz, you might recall, we have been meeting very frequently. Yes, so, yes. Uh, yes, Dr. Tanuz, most welcome to our Isaac family. And uh, we look, look looking forward to uh, uh, being enlightened by your lucid talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it visible now by its style? Yes. yes, yes, it is visible. Thank you. So, with a good welcome note by our new president, uh, Dr. B. N. Gupta, so we start the program again, Isaac uh, ORTS Series 7. We had a very nice conference uh, last uh, two weeks back, and 15th and 16th at Patna, the Isaac conference is really well attended by a lot of delegates from all over, all from the Isaac states. Wonderful conference, and we had a new president installed in this program. And already I, I welcomed our president, uh, Dr. B.N. Gupta, to be with us in the series of webinars, both the uh, URTS and ORP programs. So today's topic, you know, already we have covered uh, disk evaluation by Vanita Pathak Rai last, uh, last uh, I think, the 11th of October. And one more diagnostic series today we had uh, under gonioscopy. We had none other than Professor Tanuj Dada. We had already interacted with him sometime back, maybe in the corona time two years back now he's back with us again once again he kept our requests uh, by our mentor dr uh, ajit babu to be here with us okay as my coordinators dr shok and uh, Indra, and 
our mentors, Dr. Ajit Bhav Baji, and Chairman Sajmi Committee, Dr. Sabajar Patnaik, who has initiated the program long time back with the corona period, but Sama is ill today, is not able to join today. And of course, our President Secretary, they are always with us for these programs. Today's speaker is well known here in all over the country. And as, as I told already, my friend, uh, Dr. Vivian Gupta, and he's a professor of ophthalmology, head of glaucoma services at RP Center of Ophthalmology Science, Ames, New Delhi. He's a graduate of Ames, New Delhi, and is ever the gold medals for best undergraduate and postgraduates in ophthalmology and best clinical research under the age of 35 years at Ames. Wonderful career. He has over 300 research publications in peer reviewed index journals and has authored about five textbooks on glaucoma. He is the editor of All India Optimum Society Guidelines for the Diagnosis and Management of Primary Angular Glaucoma, Primary Opening Glaucoma, and Glaucoma Surgery. He is also the Chief Editor of the Journal of Current Glaucoma Practice, Associate Editor of the Journal of Glaucoma, and on the Editorial Board of the American Journal of Ophthalmology. He has served on the International Council of Ophthalmology Committee for Formulation of Residency and Glaucoma Fellowship Curricula. ICO Glaucoma Task Force which published ICO Global Guidelines for Glaucoma Eye Care. Currently, he is appointed the Vice Chair of the Program Planning Committee for WOGC, that's World Glaucoma Congress 2023, and International Coordinator for Glaucoma Scientific Program at Asia Pacific and Ophthalmology, APAW 2023, and Chairman of Scientific Committee of Asia Pacific Glaucoma Society Congress, APGC 2022. They're really, really nice to be with us, sir. You are Already we had interacted with you a long time back and having a beautiful uh, experience in glaucoma, it, you are authority in glaucoma, we welcome you to our webinar. And Thank of course, today's panelist, Dr. Sarmista Behra from DSS Medical College, Burla, Dr. Sumita Mahapatra from SC Medical College, Burla, and Katak. And of course, Dr. Ravi Kumar is a senior resident at Ames Patna, and Dr. Koyal Chakrabarti is a uh, senior resident again, RIO Kolkata. So these are our panelists today. They will be interacting with us. And oh, sorry. Today's moderators are Dr. Devasi Chakrabarti from Kolkata, Dr. Isha Gupta from Delhi. So these are our moderators today. They will be uh, interacting with the speaker and they will be sharing their comments in this toward the, this uh, topic. And the discussions are the postgraduates from various institutes of Ajax states, Dr. Arnab Rai from Agrawal Eye Hospital, Katak, Dr. Sai Surandar from Burla, Dr. Ranjan uh, Sarma from KMC Warangal, and Dr. Kalpravada from SCB Katak, and Dr. Ankita Sankla by Ames Patna, Dr. Parul Sadwani from Kim's Bhubaneshwar, not Ames Bhubaneshwar, and Dr. Amit Vedas from JP Rotri Katak. And of course, observance are two, Dr. Pradyumna Mishra and Dr. Ankita Sarma. So these are our today's uh, um, participants from the postgraduate side. And they will be, I request them to ask questions. Unless you ask questions, you won't you know, I mean, know that you have understood the topic. So with these few words, I welcome you all to this program. And also all the viewers who have joined this Oartis, Isaac Oartis program seven number. So. Uh, it is now over to Dr. Ajit Babu, our mentor of this program, who has initiated the glaucoma program since last two weeks and will be continuing another three to four weeks on glaucoma. It's over to you, Dr. Ajit Babu. You are muted. Dr. Ajit Babu, you are muted. Wasting much time, let us move to uh, Dr. Tanus because we can have the maximum uh, content. And I request all the postgraduates to come on to the video and uh, be active in uh, participation. It will be more interactive session rather than a didactic lecture. So thank you, uh, Dr. Ajit Babu, and thank you to all office bears for this kind invitation. So today's uh, topic is gonioscopy. And before I start, I would request all postgraduate, whenever they join ophthalmology, so you have to buy ophthalmoscope and 90D. So at that time, you must buy a gonioscope because till the time you do 100, 200 gonioscopies yourself, you will not get an idea of how the anterior chamber angle looks like. 
So in your OPD day, at least one to two gonioscopies you should do in every OPD. And then by three to six months, you will get good idea and you will feel very happy to diagnose type of glaucoma and see the abnormalities in the angle. So this lecture, I want to basically highlight the how the anterior chamber angle looks like. And this is not actually my uh, collection. This is hard work of all the residents of RP Center over the last 10, 15 years. After every round day, we go and do gonioscopy and collect the videos. So this is all our publications on gonioscopy with the, all of them have some RPC residents as co-authors. So they have worked a lot for this and I dedicate this lecture to them. So first question is that why should we do gonioscopy in the routine ophthalmic practice? Even when I see glaucoma patients, they will have a diagnosis of glaucoma, optic disc cupping. Very rarely you will see gonioscopy written in the file of an ophthalmologist. Very rare. So this is something which is lacking and why it is important. I'll just explain to you why do we need gonioscopy. So the primary purpose of gonioscopy is to differentiate the two major forms of glaucoma. That is open angle glaucoma from angle closure glaucoma. That is the primary aim of gonioscopy. And why it is important to distinguish these two entities. So in the first entity, this shows the normal open angle. So this is the anterior segment a a associated image. This is the cornea. This is the area of the angle and this is the trabecular meshwork. So this is an open drainage system. So the aqueous is draining through the trabecular meshwork. And contrast this here, the iris is blocking the area of the angle, the trabecular meshwork. So the basic purpose of gonioscopy is to distinguish open angle from angle closure. So this shows an open angle. You can see this structure is the pigmented trabecular meshwork. So this is the portion of the angle which is draining aqueous. And if you contrast this with this picture here, you can see the trabecular meshwork is blocked. So basically, if the drainage channel is blocked, that is angle closure. And if the drainage channel is open, that is the trabecular meshwork, that is open angle. And the initial treatment is totally different in these two conditions because here you need to do laser iridotomy and here you need to do medical therapy. So this is the primary purpose of gonioscopy to distinguish open angle glaucoma from angle closure glaucoma. So now I'm going to play two videos. So I like to request Dr. Ranjan. So Dr. Ranjan, can you unmute yourself and speak? Good evening, sir. Yeah, speak loudly. What is the difference between the top and the bottom video? Hello. Good evening, sir. Yes, yes. yes good evening. Don't feel shy. Even if you're wrong, doesn't matter. Sorry, sir. Please repeat, sir. My audio was not good. You have two two videos. Two videos are playing. Yes, top sir. one and bottom one. What is the main difference between these two? Sir, in upper one, uh, trabecular mesure we can see, sir. In lower one, we not that structure is not visible, sir. So all of you should very good. So all of you should concentrate on these two videos. If you learn these two videos, then you have learned gonioscopy. So here you see you follow up from the iris. So here you will see above the iris. This structure, dark grayish band this is the ciliary body band. And above the ciliary body band, you will see this white zone. That is the scleral spur. And above the steril spur, you will see this pigmented zone. That is the pigmented part of the trabecular meshwork. Then the non-pigmented part and the Schwalbe's line. So any patient where trabecular meshwork and steril spur is visible is an open angle glaucoma patient. Mm -hmm. So now you have put in the gonioscope, trabecular meshwork, steril spur visible. So this is an open angle pathology. And contrast to this bottom video, here you can see 
this tabecular meshwork seals are not visible. So that means the iris is occluding the drainage portion of the eye that is tabecular meshwork. So this is iridocorneal apposition. So this is gonioscopy of angle closure and this is gonioscopy of open angle. So this is the critical aim of gonioscopy to differentiate these two conditions which are very nicely documented in these two videos. And this is what you will see on gonioscopy. So this is Hitlam video, 25x mm -hmm. magnification of how actually the angle structure is visible. And that mm -hmm. is what you have to learn. Now, why it is important to differentiate open angle from angle closure, you will see worldwide, although primary open angle glaucoma is more common than angle closure glaucoma, the ratio is 1 is to 3. But the blindness from angle closure glaucoma is threefold higher as compared to open angle glaucoma. So to prevent blindness from glaucoma, you have to diagnose angle closure and treat it with laser iridotomy and further treatment. So it is very important to distinguish angle closure because that is the main cause of blindness in our country. Now, how to do gonioscopy? You have to do it in a dark room and your slit lamp, the illumination should be minimum and you should keep not more than one to two meter height of the slit beam. It should never cross the pupil because if the slit beam crosses the pupil, it leads to contraction of the pupil and that opens up the angle. And initially you people can purchase Goldman two mirrors that is quite good for starting gonioscopy to see superior and inferior angle. And later on, you, you may purchase different types of indentation gonioscope once you learn the technique. But for beginners, this is the ideal gonioscope to start with. So this is a technique. You just hold a swap stick. You retract the lower lid and put the gonioscope in the eye. So you have to first explain to the patient this technique because some of the patients are very apprehensive that you are going to put a lens in the eye, it is going to, you have to have some pressure. And secondly, you have to apply topical anesthesia and always ask the patient, has he come alone driving? If the patient has come driving, then don't do gonioscopy in both eyes same time because he will have difficulty when he goes back. So ideally he should come with public transport or somebody should accompany him. You apply topical anesthesia and just retract the lower lid and ask the patient to look up and then apply the gonioscope and you can use any of the artificial tears for gonioscopy or any of the gels available as artificial tear supplements and then use the angle structure. So this is the Goldman two mirror used for diagnostic gonioscopy. And once you learn, this is an indentation gonioscope. So there are two types. The one with the handle is called the Posner lens. And if you don't have the handle, only this gonioscope that is called the Suzman lens. So here you don't require a coupling fluid and the curvature matches that of the cornea. So you see the angle structures. And in this technique, you can apply pressure and open up the angle. So ideally, this is the technique for distinguishing appositional closure from synecal closure. So you view, you can see, you can view the angle structures and then I apply pressure to open up. So the previous one was Goldman two mirror. And this is the four mirror indentation gonioscope known as the Posner lens or the Suzman lens without the handle. Now in recent times, you ha also have to learn intraoperative gonioscopy because a lot of the new techniques of glaucoma require gonioscopy assisted surgery. So this I'm showing you a patient of congenital glaucoma and this is swan jacob lens so here you can see you will only see a featureless angle and only the iris so this is an anterior insertion of the iris in a patient of primary congenital glaucoma and this is a examination under anesthesia so this type of gonioscopy is required for congenital glaucoma and all for all minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries so now you can view the angle structures under the microscope. This video depicts the technique and, of direct gonioscopy. And this is another technique. This is the coipis lens. So here a handheld slit lamp is being used. 
and you can put the coipless lens in both the eyes and compare one eye with the fellow eye. So this is a handheld slit lamp. Patient is intubated. This is examination under anesthesia. And you can also do under the microscope. So these are the different techniques of how to do gonioscopy. Now always remember that in this era of glaucoma surgery, you need to learn how to do intraoperative gonioscopy. And for that, you have to do it on the OT table and you have to tilt the patient's eye 45 degree and tilt the microscope 30 to 45 degree. And then you will get a view of the anterior chamber angle. So here you can see on the OT live. So you have to tilt the microscope and now I'm tilting the patient's eye. So then you will get a view of the anterior chamber angle with the Swan Jacob gonioscope. So it this technique you must learn and then once you have tilted the eye you can see eye is being tilted so this requires you have to put viscoelastic and deepen the anterior chamber and here you can see now you have to operate on the eye so this is a goniotomy for primary congenital glaucoma so you can see you have to view the angle structures the assistance has to hold the gonioscope and the surgeon has to operate so you have to require this skill of intraoperative gonioscopy in addition to what you have been used to in the OPD with the Goldman lenses. So intraoperative gonioscopy, 45 degree tilt of the eye, the microscope is tilted and then the Swan Jacob intraoperative gonioscopy is used and you can see a lot of surgical maneuvers can be done through the gonioscope when you operate on the tabecular meshwork. Now, how to identify the angle structure? I showed you in the video just to re recap, follow up from the iris. Iris visible, then sidri body band visible, then this white zone visible, that is scleral spur, then pigmented part of the tabecular meshwork visible, then non-pigmented part, and then the short base line. If the scleral spur tabecular meshwork is visible, that denotes an open angle pathology. Now, who will volunteer Dr. Pradyumya Mishra? Can you unmute yourself and comment on this video? What do you see? Unmute, unmute yourself, Dr. Pradyuman. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hello. So what is your comment on this video? What do you see? Uh, sir, I can see the scleral spur, the uh, posterior uh, pigment epithelium, the anterior uh, pigment epithelium, and the uh, non pigmented epithelium, and the Schwabe's line, sir. No, not pigment epithelium, trabecular meshwork, pigmented trabecular meshwork. Yes, so, sir. Very good. So, this is open angle because scleral spur is visible and pigmented part of trabecular meshwork is visible. Okay. So, very good. So, diagnosis is open angle type of glaucoma. So who will Dr. Arnab Roy? So can you comment what you see here? So we can see a um, ciliary body band. Very good. The, very good. Therefore it is an open angle. Yeah. So here in addition after the iris ciliary body band is visible, then the skill spur That's and good. pigmented part of tabecular meshwork. So in Myopic patient, you will see deep anterior chamber and the ciliary body band is visible. So don't confuse this with angle dissection. I'll come later. This is normal finding. In high myopes, you will get symmetrical white ciliary body band visible. Now, coming to angle closure, you have to learn to identify the Schwalbe's line. And for that, you require a corneal wedge. So you make a 30 degree angulation of the slit lamp and you will see two beams of light. First one from corneal endothelium, corneal epithelium, where they meet that point is the termination of Desmet's membrane or the starting point of the angle. So here you can see two beams of light. This one is corneal endothelium. This one is corneal epithelium. The point where they are meeting, that point is the Schwalbe's line. So this is known as the corneal wedge technique to identify the Schwalbe's line. So if this apex is not visible, that means the iris is covering this apex. That means angle is completely closed. 
so if you if there is a featureless angle you are not sure you make the wedge and the apex of the wedge denotes the shawl based line if this wedge is not visible that means the iris is above this wedge and the angle is completely closed so remember corneal endothelium epithelium meeting point is the shawl based line now who is the dr kalpana what is your comment on this sir it seems like a closed angle sir very good anything the, else the configuration of the iris is showing sir double hump sign very good so what does it indicate what pathology sir plateau iris syndrome sir very good so this is classical double hump sign sine wave configuration this you get when you have a prominent ciliary body which is pushing up and closing the iris so the diagnosis is confirmed on gonioscopy and later by ubm so the first is the equator of ciliary body, ciliary body and this is best diagnosed indentation type gonioscopes so this is sine wave configuration plateau iris syndrome now dr amit bidasaria so uh, yes. can you comment on this angle it is open angle or closed angle sir uh, it is open angle as very good as i can see yes sir no no you will not get easily away you come back it's not yes sir yes sir okay see, see, see this corneal wedge yes sir so apex is here yes sir so why you are saying open angle so that is a common thing this is pseudo trabecular mesh work sometime you get trauma or deviators increase pigmentation on the angle so this pigmentation is not trabecular mesh work why because corneal wedge apex is here this is solvage line so this pigmentation is anterior to solvage line so it cannot be the trabecular mesh work that is why i don't comment on the pigmentation without seeing drawing the corneal apex so here this is the apex so this is a completely closed angle and this is pseudo pigment anterior to solvage line so this is not an open angle this is closed angle confirmed by the corneal wedge now who will answer this who is the deepak lakra he he is not visible although his name is visible deepak are you there what what dr parul sadwani yes sir so can you comment on this uh sir this is a closed angle structure hmm so you will need some coffee or tea i think why you are saying closed angle see very carefully This white white zone is visible. Ah, ciliary spur. Ciliary spur is visible. Then it cannot be closed angle. But so what close. is this? What is this? You see this white white band like structure? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is this? What is posterior embryo toxon? so anyway this is band like shawl based line if you make the corneal wedge apex will be here so many times in young patients or juvenile glaucoma you will get this band like structure visible this is prominent band like shawl based line this is sign of congenital anomaly in the angle okay so this is open angle with band like shawl based line now dr sunanda or dr anita mishra dr anita sankhla can you please unmute yourself and comment i think they need to come on to the video actually ha three are not uh... so you sunanda, have to... yeah. sunanda you can answer come on to the video and answer try to answer yes, actually my video is live doesn't matter your answer your audio is working 
No, we will not give yes, you. It, my is lagging and it's stuck to the previous one. Okay, Dr. Anju Chauhan, can you comment? So, any volunteers, any of the residents can diagnose this. So none of you are able to diagnose why you were giving very good answer initially. Ha, Pradyuman and Ranjan, you, your videos are Ranjan on. So there, yeah, Ranjan is there, no? He cannot. Pradyuman and try to describe what you are seeing at least. Sir, uh, ciliary band body, I am able to see, sir. Then scleral spur is thicker looking, sir. Hmm. So this. Then, uh, okay, okay. Don't worry. So here, very typical finding is there. Uniform, dense pigmentation on the tabacular meshworks. And this is the superior tabacular meshwork. So if you put in a gonioscope and you see this very dense pigmented tabacular meshwork, superior diagnosis is pigment dispersion syndrome or pigmentary glaucoma. So this sort of uniform dense pigmentation or tabacular meshwork, you will not get in any other condition and especially in the superior angle. So this is diagnostic of pigment dispersion or pigmentary glaucoma. You see very dense uniform pigment on the tabacular meshwork. This is open angle, but pigment is blocking mechanically the angle. So, sir, what was the two big thicker white lines, sir? See, this one is the scleral spur. And it, this is the tabacular mesh. Everything is getting obliterated by the dense pigmentary deposit. And what will you see on the sit lamp in this patient? Krukenberg spindle. Krukenberg spindle you will see on the cornea. Okay. So who is the next one video on? So Dr. Subudi, you have to tell these residents, none of them are putting video on, so I can't ask, I'm not sure whether they are interacting or no. All Otherwise, the residents are requested to come with the video. Otherwise, Pradyuman, you will be... You yeah. will be <laughs> Please volunteer, don't worry. Do, those two, three people I, who are active, it's, it's when fine. You, yeah, when you come to Delhi, then I will give you a treat. Hmm? So <laughs> this is slightly difficult, but you tell me what you can see. So there is heterogeneous deposition of pigments. Very good, uh, very good. Heterogeneous so deposition in between. You exfoliation see? syndrome. Very good, very good. So this is called salt and pepper pigmentation. You see the previous one video, very dense uniform pigmentation. And you see this video, irregular pigmentation and this white fluffy material deposit in between. Yes. So this is called salt and pepper pigmentation. So this is classical of pseudo exfoliation. This is very important to diagnose because these patients have very severe course as compared to normal patients of open angle coma. Okay, very good. So this is pseudo exfoliation pigmentation. Now one more video. Dr. Parul Sadwani has come on the video. Madam, you have to volunteer for this. What do you see now? You have put in a gonioscope. Uh, sir, again, pigmentary deposition blocking the angle. नहीं कुछ और है ध्यान से देखो so here you see this is the tabacular meshwork and here iris here iris is attaching to tabacular meshwork and plus you have this irregular pigmentation spattered on tabacular meshwork so see this is classical starting of angle closure glaucoma okay so yes, if you do gonioscopy in the opening I mean, angle in the angle so yeah what? Sinica in the angle has started and this pigment denotes previously the iris has come in contact with the angle structure. So there is a intermittent angle closure attack and iris is attaching to the tabacular meshwork. So this is very classical of angle closure, primary angle closure or primary angle closure glaucoma. So moment you see this, either you have to start the patient on pilocarpine or do gyagaridotomy. 
if patient is not willing or you don't have laser so this is the basic purpose of gonioscopy this is not open angle although it is pigmented because of the synechia formation iris attaching to the trabecular meshwork so this is angle closure immediately you have to do yag laser idiotomy now dr ranjan yes sir comment on this Yes, so ciliary band body is visible, sir. Ciliary body band is visible. Okay, very good. Then, sir, scleral spur visible. Then, I'm not very good, to... very good. So Einstein has very good, nice quote: "Imagination is more important than knowledge." So I think you are applying that here. So this is completely occlusal angle. Yeah, yeah, it is completely closed. Nothing is visible. Where you are, where you are seeing scleral spur, the back. Nothing is visible. It's completely closed angle. Okay, and this is called Mount Fuji sign. So Mount Fuji is volcanic mountain in Japan. So there is a mound here. Okay, and if you see clearly behind the your ciliary processes are visible here. so this sign angle is completely closed and there is a thick anteriorly displaced lens closing the angle so this is one of the signs to describe angle closure due to lens based mechanism so this is called mount fuji sign this mountain type volcanic structure complete angle closure no angle structure is visible okay so whoever diagnosed angle closure you have full marks and whoever diagnosed scleral spur and ciliary body band imagination is very good okay clear yes sir so now once you have put in the gonioscope and the becler meshwork is not visible so then you have to ask the question whether this is synechial angle closure or appositional angle closure now you see you have put in the gonioscope primary position no angle structure is visible but when you manipulate the gonioscope the scleral spur become visible just see again primary position no angle structure visible and when you move the angle towards the patient's angle being viewed or ask the patient to look up so why this happens because it's a convex iris so primary position you are not able to view the angle structures but when you move the gonioscope towards the angle or ask the patient to look on the opposite side then you go over the convexity and you see scleral spur has become visible now so this is called appositional angle closure in primary position angle structure appear occluded but on manipulation the scleral spur has become visible so there is no synechial angle closure there is a appositional angle closure this is called manipulation gonioscopy which is done by movement of the goldman two mirror now who will comment on this dr deepak lakra dr ravi dr zahiruddin khan so why you people are not you are all of you are muted and most of you are not showing your video don't worry this is how you learn don't be afraid to answer wrong yes i learned gonius yeah, first, first when i should do wrong that only you will learn what is right yeah so i learned gonioscopy only late into faculty we didn't understand gonioscopy jr ship we don't know yes. what is going on okay so we don't be scared who is the one with the video on so only pradyumna can you tell me so by all of you the executive member yes, give arnab is there arnab is there pradyumna is there Sunanda, she's video is not working. Ranjan is there, and so, Parul is there. So, a lot of people are there. No problem. So, any of you tell me what is going on here? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir, hello. It is a closed angle, sir, which on indentation opens up and shows the angle. Uh, very good, very good, structures. very good. So, this is Poisson's lens indentation gonioscope. Primary position angle is appearing closed. 
when i am applying pressure then skills per is becoming visible you see here yes sir so this is gold standard for differentiating apposition angle closer from sinical angle closer you have to press the gonioscope you push aqueous into the angle and the angle opens up and if it doesn't open up then means sinical here you see the skills yes, per has become visible ha yeah, very good So Dr. Dada, you wanted to uh, uh, answer from Dr. Zahiruddin Khan. Yes, yes, sir. I am I'm not a resident. I am a professor in a high tech medical college. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that doesn't matter. No, no, he is he is the president of OS OS. I uh, <laughs> already introduced Jahir. Okay, worry. okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Till you can answer. <laughs> no, no, we are. I already answered. That's why I kept quiet. It yes, is basically yes. for the residents. कॉज Neovascular glaucoma. No, no cause of neovascular glaucoma. Most like most frequent cause one or two. So um, pre-existing old CRVO or diabetes. Yes. Ha, ha don't say pre-existing old CRVO. So C old. ischemic CRVO. CRVO, ischemic CRVO, or diabetic retinopathy, advanced diabetic yeah. retinopathy. Retinopathy. Proliferative diabetes. So yeah. this is very important. Now this is very important. Go new video. Have we captured it? So don't, normally you don't see this. This is. Irregular vessels <laughs> crossing the serial spur, arborizing on the tabecular meshwork. Now it is very important that when we see ischemic CRVO or PDR patient, we do undilated gonioscopy. So most of the retina people they will dilate and call the patient, and this is what is missed. So now this patient is detected at an open angle stage. So if you see this immediately, pan-dental photocoagulation has to be done. so this is very important sign if you wait few weeks this will become complete angle closure closure yeah so this is open angle pathological neoascularization of the angle yeah can anyone tell the stages of uh, neoascularization of the angle again everyone is silent <laughs> बट नाउ सैनिकल स्टेज So then it becomes very difficult to treat medically. You have to intervene surgically. That is why you have to do gonioscopy, CRVO, PDR patient before dilating them. Diagnose at open angle stage. Wow. Now who will diagnose this? Dr. Sunanda, are you there? Can you? Dr. Sunanda. So her video uh, is not working. I think her audio and video is not working, sir. Okay, Doctor Parul. Parul, yeah. Ah, uh, sir, so Sainiki, some deposition is there at the angle structure. You are which which year? You are in which year of ophthalmology? So first year, first. So don't then then don't worry, Doctor Ranjan. You are which year? Sir, first year. Amit Amit Vidasriya. Yes, sir. Sir, these are the broad uh, base spinicia, sir. So this is sir peripheral anterior spinicia. ये देखो ऊपर कुछ लिखा है तो मैं दिख रहा है ये क्या लिखा है blue में? Yes, sir. Ar. Ar क्या होता है? Auto refraction. Glaucoma में क्या होता है? Ar. Ar trauma. बड़ा हिंट दे हाँ वेरी गुड दिस इज वेरी डिफरेंट डेवलपमेंटल अनामलीज ऑफ द इंटीरियर चैम्बर एंगल इफ यू सी केयरफुली यू हैव दिस प्रोमिनेंट बैंड लाइक एंटीरियर डिस्प्ले शॉलवेज लाइन 
and the iris is going and attaching to it so this pulls the iris causes correctopia and gonioscopy is diagnostic very anterior insertion of the iris to the broad cd body band so this is typical of axenfield's rigors anomaly okay and you will normally see this bilateral so dr ranjan yes sir dr arnav you have not answered anything arnav roy yes sir so the presence of broad based peripheral anterior synecia so likely diagnosis so angle closure glaucoma so again this is a 12 year old child okay now here you see the iris is going to the periphery of the cornea so this is how axenfield rigor anomaly will look like on gonioscope you have very peripheral there is a deep anterior chamber so there is a anterior segment degenesis so there is a very anterior displaced shawl base line and iris goes and attaches to the periphery of the cornea so this is not angle closure this is a developmental anomaly of the angle axenfield rigor syndrome okay so this may be slightly difficult for you this is again this is a patient of juvenile open angle coma so here two findings are there this prominent band like shawl base line and anterior insertion of the iris so in the developmental glaucomas the iris fails to recede from the trabecular meshwork so that is why you get a anterior insertion of the iris so that is sign of developmental glaucomas now who will answer this amit vidasriya कुछ भी बोल दो नॉट श्योर तो आई अंडरस्टैंड इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट आई एम टेलिंग यू तुम तुम बस कमेंट बुक में दिख क्या रहा है कमेंट तो करो क्या दिख रहा है सर 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 तुमने हेवी डिनर करा लगता है है कि तुम्हें नॉर्मल लग रहा है बच्चे ध्यान से देखो ये एनीवे ये बहुत डिफिकल्ट है तो मैं अपने रेजिडेंट मेरे रेजिडेंट ने क्या बोला वर्म्स इन द एंटीरियर चैम्बर एंगल हम्म डायग्नोसिस इज एनआईडिया ओके सो हियर यू हैव रूडिमेंट्री आयरिस स्टंप रूडिमेंट्री आयरिस स्टंप व्हिच इज blocking the angle in some area secondary angle closure these are small atrophic ciliary processes and this is the lens equator visible so aniridia is a misnomer there is a rudimentary iris stump present okay that goes and blocks the angle causes secondary angle closure okay so this is aniridia ये एक बताना पड़ेगा अर्नब रॉय को सर दिस इज द सुपीरियर एंगल एंड इन द सुपीरियर एंगल वी कैन सी द पोस्टीरियर ट्रेबिकुलर मेशवर्क एंड द स्क्लेर स्पर बट देर इज सम हाइपो पिगमेंटेड पैचेस लाइकली डायग्नोसिस
ठीक है आप आप सब लोगों को गोनियोस्कोपी करना पड़ेगा ठीक है कल से गोनियोस्कोपी करना है ओपीडी में हाँ भाई अमित और प्रद्युमा बताओ क्या है दिस इज वाइडनिंग ऑफ द सिलरी बॉडी बैंड इेगुलर वाइडनिंग ऑफ सिलरी बॉडी बैंड दिस एंगल रिसेशन सो एनी चाइल्ड क्रिकेट बॉल इंजरी ब्लंट इंजरी कम्स टू ओपीडी Don't do immediately. Call him back after six, six to eight weeks. Then you have to do peripheral retinal examination and before dilating, do gonioscopy. So if you see irregular widening of ciliary body band, this is angle recession. Patient is lifelong follow up because they develop glaucoma ten, twenty years later. So every year, patient has to come in and get the pressure checked. So this is irregular widening of the ciliary body band, angle recession. Okay. <coughs> ये कौन बताएगा हाँ भाई अर्नब जी बताओ ये क्या है ये खत्म हो गया थोड़ा स्टॉक खत्म हो गया दिस इज अ फॉरेन बॉडी लॉज इन द इंफीरियर एंगल दिस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग दिस दिस वाज सम डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैजिस्ट्रेट वीआईपी टाइप पेशेंट सो ही केम टू आवर कैजुअलिटी एंड सेल्फ सील्ड परफोरेशन सो रेजिडेंट सेंट हिम ऑफ सील्ड हो गया परफोरेशन नथिंग टू बी डन सो ही हैड कांस्टेंट यूवीआईटिस आफ्टर दैट नॉट डायग्नोसिंग हियर देयर सो देन समबडी रेफर्ड कि डॉक्टर तानुज से गोनियोस्कोपी करा लो सो दिस दिस वाज द गोनियोस्कोपी द ग्लास फॉरेन बॉडी इन द एंगल सो ही ही वाज प्लेइंग बैडमिंटन एंड ओपोनेंट हिट शटल कॉक एंड स्प्लिंटर हिट ग्लास सो ग्लास फॉरेन बॉडी इन द एंगल सो आई हैड टू डू गोनियोस्कोपी एंड देन Under swan jack, for gonioscopy, remove this glass foreign body. So gonioscopy is very important for later on perforating injuries. Many times you will see foreign body lodged in the angle. So not only for diagnosis, intraoperatively gonioscopy you have to do, and then under gonioscopy guidance, remove this foreign body. So very good. Wasn't there uh, any in, uh, external sign of injury? No, there was self sealed perforation. Self -sealed but gonioscopy nobody does no. Okay, okay, okay. Perforation. Mm -hmm. So, what is this, Doctor uh, Pradyumna? Yes, sir. Hello. Ha. Huh, what is this? Hello. Sir, this is... Hello. Ha. Ha. Bolo. Bolo. Sunai de rahe. Sir. Sir. The... बताओ कोई डरने वाला बात ही कुछ भी बोलो सर तो बोलो सर अच्छा एनी बडी एल्स डायलिसिस Ah, who was this? Who, who was this? Sir, Last Sunanda. one. She is Sunanda. Sunanda, very good. So you are right. So yeah. gonioscopy is very important when you do glaucoma filtering surgery, trachectomy. You have to see what is the cause of failure, successful or failed. So this is trachectomy ostium superior angle. So this is your iridectomy, and wow. this is the cleft in the sclera. <coughs> Patent. Trabeclectomy ostium visible on gonioscopy. You have to learn this. And here, yes, Doctor Sunanda, what is the difference here? Sir, this is a partially closed ostium. So here, patient has shallow AC and iris has gone into ostium. Okay. So that is one of the causes of failure of trap. so very important to do gonioscopy and diagnose this sometime what happen we have done trabeclectomy and pressure is high and people do digital massage so unless you diagnose this iris in the ostium we do massage it will go further mm. in so that is why it is very important what is the fail cause of failure of trabeclectomy so now this is the last difficult question 
anybody parul why don't you answer kalpana what so anyway this may be difficult for you that i told you the next 5 years you will see lot of mig is in minimally invasive glaucoma surgery so this is called intracanalicular stent so there is stenting of the shams canal so under gonioscopy visualization you have to operate you incise the trabecular meshok and pull put in this implant to dilate the shams canal so this is called hydrus intracanalicular stent okay so diagnostic gonioscopy i have shown you you require to do international gonioscopy for all these procedures and this is just i am showing you for for primary congenital glaucoma nowadays 360 degree trabeculotomy sorry is done with the illuminated micro catheter so this micro catheter is inserted in the canal of slam it will go 360 degree and you can visualize the movement of this catheter through the gonioscope see now this catheter is moving through the canal of slam so all these are the recent advances in glaucoma surgery where you require intraoperative gonioscopy and this was very interesting patient my resident said sir there is prominent solvage line and actually there was a wooden stick lying in the anterior chamber angle you see this yes, yes. there was broom stick injury wooden stick in the angle now you see I'm, at the end of surgery this wooden stick has come into the ia so gonioscopy sometimes it reveals very fascinating things in the anterior chamber angle so part of ophthalmic evaluation you must do gonioscopy imagine this huge broom stick in the anterior chamber angle okay so un until we did gonioscopy not possible so now by manually vitreoretinal forceps holding and removing this large you can see this broom stick hai in the anterior chamber angle so anyway if you want to revise this so this is free website world glaucoma association wga.1 you can register here you have all the glaucoma teaching modules here iop gonioscopy perimetry optic nerve oct and lot of questions on glaucoma are answered here frequently asked questions on glaucoma so all residents can register here is totally free and you can see all the gonioscopy videos and optic nerve and other evaluation so i will close here any questions are most welcome thank you very much So now it will go to uh, moderators or moderators. Richa. So I think resident, you have to do gonioscopy because I realize you people may not be doing gonioscopy. So after this lecture, just to motivate you, you must buy gonioscope and do gonioscopy. And maybe when I give this lecture again after one year, two years, then you will understand this. Um, hello yeah. good evening yeah. sir richa here yes please so uh, sir i'm a shankar nitrale trained person and Very we good. were told by dr lingam vijaya that you need to do at least 500 gonioscopes to actually know that you know you are absolutely you are able absolutely. to diagnose things and pick up things Very so good. a wonderful lecture i've heard this before also and i'm sure the residents have uh, uh, you know taken notes and uh, uh, i had one question if yeah. iop needs to be done post gonioscopy which one so how long iop ablation tonometry has to be done post gonioscopy how yeah. long should one wait for the displaced aqueous to get replenished so oh, i think you should ideally you do are... it before yeah, yeah do yeah. it before the yeah. yeah yeah 
because a lot of uh, indentation will be there and uh, i yes yes it's better to do it before yeah. to devasis your comments Def. sir that was an excellent presentation by professor tanuj dada i think all the you are not able to hear <coughs> sir uh, am i audible sir yeah yeah okay so that was an excellent come little bit closer come little bit closer yeah that was an excellent presentation by uh, professor tanuj dada and i think all the residents picked up very important uh, clinical points like how to do a gonioscopy what is the technique like dim the room illumination uh, keep a smaller uh, height of the split beam and uh, then document the findings so very important thing you have to document the findings like uh, uh, sir said so you have to uh, ideally draw a diagram uh, in lv prashad we always uh, used to draw a, a cross sign and then put an arrow and then what are the angle structures that are visible before indentation and after indentation and that is very uh, uh, useful for the residents uh, to uh, understand what are the angle structures they are seeing now maybe <coughs> after 6 uh, months or 1 year when they repeat the gonioscopy gonioscopy is something that is dynamic even if a patient has an open angle today patient can have an angle closure at some point of time because of the progressive growth of the lens so if you yeah. have a, a documented oh, notes yeah. of your findings yeah. that that is that is very yeah. uh, important so uh, and 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 the videos were excellent and the clinical pictures were excellent and i think we were uh, all benefited by sir excellent talk thank you next the panelist that is sarvista yes, sir very good teaching sir and uh, like uh, i'll i'll surely make efforts to inculcate this practice of gonioscopy in uh, the patients we do very little gonioscopy at the center okay inshallah kal baat karte hain i have a word for dr dada can i have a word for dr dada ha sure sure thank you dada excellent presentation i Thank wish you. to be you are my you should be a mentor i you should be your student no no very <laughs> very good presentation sir <laughs> thank you and thank you yeah, yeah, was... people are going and learning the gonioscopy in the uh, in the aoi saying something but still uh, sitting at home they are learning so many good things so they are lucky those are attended this meeting <laughs> i am glad that so many things have been told and so nice pictures have been depicted thank you sir thank you so much thank you. thank you thank you very much main thing is uh, practice in the clinic yeah yeah correct uh, here after all the residents they should at least because most are uh, on the in government medical colleges they should uh, try on their patients and uh, then uh, try to uh, evaluate and estimate whether it is closed angle or open angle and if there are any abnormalities show to the consultants glaucoma consultants there last time only we have uh, talked about disc and uh, now gonioscopy both are very very essential uh, components of glaucoma diagnosis so residents need to understand that they that they need to do gonioscopy in a normal patient yes. first just do it in yeah. normal patients don't do it don't wait for a glaucoma patient to come to you no. just do it in all patients, patients so that you get an angle keep doing yes the angle structures yeah actually tanush has shown a uh, very very nice videos actually it's very interesting to see because it's itself is like a endoscopy see if you are yeah. seeing gonioscope means a lot of angle structures which are not directly visible through gonioscope you are seeing and it is almost like a endoscopy showing all the things like yeah. when the yeah. foreign bodies he has shown are very interesting yeah yeah there was a good variety of videos and actually uh, i always feel that uh, doing gonioscopy is an art and unless until you keep repeating it you cannot master the technique so all the residents should uh, of course uh, in a normal patient also you just keep doing it dr ravi do you want to make comments dr ravi kumar dr koyal uh, thank you sir thank you sir it was a very real uh, a uh, good presentation sir uh, we all are benefited by it sir and we will be uh, sir use uh, we will practice it in our uh, setup also sir very good very good thank you sir dr saras i think dr koyal it's not it's not only the domain of the residents even the general ophthalmologist yes. also should learn practicing then only they can refer the cases very important yes, yes. 
Yes, actually, these two procedures, disc evaluation and uh, gonioscopy, I feel this is you, you the, the, no much cost is involved and it can be practiced, it can be done anywhere, even in the remotest place. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. So, without going for higher gadget, electronic gadgets, you can practice it. Dr. Koyal, you want to say something? something? Dr. Koyal? It was a very enlightening presentation, sir. And uh, we are doing gonioscopy in our glaucoma clinic now in RIO. Very so good. It was really helpful, sir. Thank you. But, uh, and Sunanda yeah. actually answered a lot on the uh, chat box. Yeah, yeah. Very now she is uh, available on uh, video. <laughs> so you want to share some experiences, Dr. Sunanda? So uh, any Dr. doubts for the postgraduate students? Yes. Resident, do you have any doubts? Sir, you have already cleared. Everybody is cleared. Yes, sir. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Yeah, uh, I mean, sir, I wanted to ask uh, why for beginners, sir, why we do gonioscopy, sir, especially the nasal and temporal angles, sir, because of corneal edema, lot of times it becomes hazy and difficult to view those angles. So superior and uh, inferior angles are easier, but uh, nasal and temporal, sir, how to prevent that corneal edema and this, sir, can you explain? So see, if, if if for the beginners, you will get most of the information from the superior and the inferior angle. Yes. So they are covering okay. large circumference. And then you can just rotate the gonioscope and rotate the slit lamp and get the information of the temporal laser angle. For open angle pathology diagnosis, oh. easily you can make from the superior inferior angle. You don't need to even rotate. For angle closure specific pathologies, you may require 360 to view. Why I said two mirror because it is less expensive. But later on, if you want quick view, then you can invest in the four mirror. I showed you the Posner Suzman lens. Yes, so sir. there, in one go, without coupling fluid, you can view the entire angle. But that requires much more expertise and very difficult to document the angle. So ideally, when you start glaucoma clinics and all, you should do like you document the optic disc. So similarly, you should document the angle at diagnosis and then subsequently patient comes for follow up one year, two year. Then again, you take this photograph and also take the gonio photograph. So that is the ideal way. And gonio photograph, superior inferior angle is sufficient. That will give you enough information whether angle is open or closed. And that is the primarily use of gonioscopy. Rest what conditions are covered are full spectrum. General ophthalmologists may not require that, but the critical thing is distinguishing angle closure from open angle, which is easily done with the two meter gonioscope. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Any other residents? Do you have any doubts? So, sir, at what magnification and what should be the height and width of the slit beam so for examining the gonioscopy? See, I, you, for initial diagnosis, you can keep at 16x slit line magnification. And if you find a pathology, go up to 25x. But for angle closure disease, yes. there the slit beam should be just one millimeter and focus in the angle. And it should never cross the pupil in a dark room. There you will diagnose. But here, because I have to show the videos and the images, I have done in diffuse illumination because that is for education. But when you're diagnosing, you have to narrow the slit beam one millimeter and focus on the periphery of the angle, not on the pupil. Okay. And 16x is good magnification for beginners to diagnose. Thank you, sir. Anybody from viewers? Uh, yes, please, carry on. Uh, Jeet, I think we have crossed one hour, so... No problem, no problem. <laughs> we are just Jeet, closing. Yeah, if, if, if they, they can email me if you have any question, Dr. Subhuti yeah. or other yeah, yeah. resident. But I would request resident next time, whenever you participate, all of you should have video on. Yes. And you should study the subject before coming. Like, you know, gonioscopy today. So you should have read up gonioscopy, seen on the net, and then come. Then you will learn much more. Okay. Absolutely right. They must interact. 
that is very important uh, that is for, for basic purpose actually of this uh, we told 15 days back that uh, this class will be taken on this date and uh, gonioscopy will be the subject next subject is visual field evaluation yeah. now onwards please study and come please do. Yeah. okay the speaker uh, dr bnr subuddhi will be announcing uh, his yeah. name and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, it will be in may may 15th or uh, may uh, may no, 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 no. November, November. November. <laughs> November. Yes. <laughs> Will it be on Tuesday or Wednesday? It shall be Tuesday. 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 Okay. And, okay. Uh, then, then only Tuesday. because of Dr. Dada's some program yesterday. Okay. So we shifted this. Okay. But usually it's Tuesdays only. And next yes. Tuesday we'll have an RP program. Uh, uh, research and Public Initiative program next Tuesday, 8 o'clock. Okay. So. Uh, I think it's a uh, time to offer the vote of thanks. Before I offer the vote of thanks, may I ask Jyoti, our uh, host, yes. to play the video? Of the yeah, next will be uh, no, 15th yes, November. 15th November, visual fields. So, Ms. Jyoti? Yes, I'll be playing, sir. Thank you very much. I think uh, uh, we must pay all of us to thanks to our today's speaker, Dr. Professor Tanush Dada. I think uh, my, my point of I mean, comment is that because sometimes it becomes difficult to show the bonus code picture to the student, but now we have, I think, by your video scope, I think you've shown all the pictures of different types of bonus code. It's a really interesting one. And I think all the residents, you know, last webinar we had 15 residents. But somehow, they, uh, only few people have been interacted. But today, I think almost seven to eight residents have almost interacted twice or thrice today's uh, webinar. So really, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tanush Dada, involving the postgraduate students. We want that. Thank so you. we want that they should ask questions. They should interact with the, the speaker. That is our aim. So it's a really wonderful webinar today. I must thank our, our mentor, Dr. Rajit Babu, inviting Dr. Tanush Dada once again to this webinar. And of course, our office bearers of IJOC, uh, Dr. B. N. Gupta and Dr. Swaraj Bhattacharya is staying almost from beginning to end today. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. B. N. Gupta and Dr. Swaraj. And I must thank the, our moderators, Dr. Devasis and uh, Dr. Richa, interacting with the speaker and interacting with the post students. And also the panelists, Dr. Sarmista, Dr. Koyal, and Dr. Ravi Kumar, offering some of the comments and their, uh, I mean, uh, interacting with the again the post year students so above all the thanks to all the post year students you have done a wonderful job today answering many of the questions i think some of the students answered very well so keep it up and i request to always to come with the video on never stop the video so that the speaker gets interest to interact with you and always ask questions unless you ask questions we do not know that whether you understood or not so thank you, everybody. Thank you, today's host, Entered Pharmaceuticals, supporting the platform today. So thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, sir.